In this video, we will explore the limits of surgery for pancreatic cancer, specifically ductal adenocarcinoma. There are other varieties of pancreatic tumors to which this discussion may not apply. We will explore how expert pancreatic surgeons make that decision because surgery is the only real hope for cure. And we will also explore the important determinants in the process. A diagnosis pancreatic cancer is either not metastatic, that is, it has not spread beyond the confines of the pancreas and it's localized to the pancreas, or it has spread to other parts of the body. Our discussion is around the former. There are some caveats about metastatic pancreatic cancer. In the great majority of the patients, surgery is not an option, but there are some small caveats that I wish to discuss. The main aim of pancreatic surgery is to remove the tumor completely, what is called an R0 resection. In this cartoon, you can see a black rim that is the resected tissue, and inside is the tumor, and it does not reach the margin that we have removed. This microscopic margin of healthy tissue should at least be one millimeter or greater. The less desirable outcome is an R1 resection, which means that there are microscopic cancer cells present at the resection margin as shown over here. And the least desirable outcome when the tumor is visible with the naked eye at the margin or inside the patient. The surgery should also aim to remove the appropriate lymph nodes along with the cancer. Lymph nodes are fleshy masses which can trap cancer cells and, hen and hence they hold prognostic value as well as the need to remove them together with the specimen. For surgeons to assess the tumor, they need a high resolution contrast CT scan or the equivalent MRI scan to make the assessment. The scans are reviewed to see if the pancreatic cancer is removable, this is also called resectable pancreatic cancer. In this case, an attempt can be made with an expectation that there will be R0 resection or margins will be negative of cancer cells. If the pancreatic cancer is close to important structures such as important blood vessels, then sometimes that assumption cannot be made and that condition is called, or that situation is called borderline resectable, where the removal or complete removal of cancer is not assured. Finally, the cancer may be locally advanced. That, that means it cannot be removed with surgery because of its association with important structures which cannot be removed with surgery. All three situations occur when the pancreatic cancer is localized to where it arose from and is limited to the pancreas. Patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer, when it has spread beyond the pancreas, as I have suggested already, surgery is not an option. But again, this situation will be discussed again. Now, let me give you a bit of a background about what kinds of cancers are resectable, borderline resectable, or locally advanced by drawing some simple line drawings. Here's a basic cartoon drawing. This is the gullet that enters the stomach. The stomach churns the food over and passes it into the small bowel. This is the liver that produces bile that comes down the bile tube that traverses the pancreas and enters the small bowel. Behind the stomach is the gland called the pancreas. It has two main functions. It produces enzymes that go down this tube to digest the food. 90% of the digestion occurs through these enzymes. And it also produces insulin that stops us from being diabetic. It is a rather flat organ that lies across the upper abdomen. This is a cartoon of the pancreas gland which has a bulbous head, a tapered neck that expands into the body and finally tapers again to a tail. A small part of it protrudes towards the midline is called the uncinate process. I wish to highlight this very important vein that continues upwards towards the liver. Over here it's called the portal vein. This takes blood from the gut to the liver after having absorbed all of the goodness from the meals. The important thing is to understand association with the pancreas, the uncinate process and the neck, head and body. And now look, let's look at the main arteries. This is the aorta at the back, which is the main artery that supplies the lower half of the body. It has two main branches. The first, first branch gives off three branches, one to the liver, the other to the stomach and the other to the spleen and pancreas. And then lower down is another main artery, the superior mesenteric artery that supplies the gut. So you can see at the top, we have an artery supplying the liver, stomach, pancreas, and spleen, and at the bottom, pretty much 90% of the gut. So these are very important. In this cartoon, we can see the gray blobs representing pancreatic cancer. In general, it's only at one site that, that the pancreatic cancer occurs, but I have drawn several for illustration. These are away from any of the main veins or the arteries, and this situation would be resectable pancreatic cancer. I have redrawn further spots with potential sites of cancer in gray over here. And now you can see that these, these sites of cancer are in contact with the major veins or the main arteries. In this situation, let's assume these represent borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. Let's explore this a little bit further. The surgeons particularly want to assess the veins and the arteries that I'd shown you earlier to see their involvement 
with the cancers and this is done in a thoughtful and organized way. Each scan is assessed for involvement. Let's first see how veins are assessed for involvement with cancer. Surgeons wish to know whether the vein has drawn over here, what longitudinal section in centimeter is involved, is it involved in the circumference or transversely and this is done through the degrees so 0 to 180 degrees means 50 percent of the vein is involved and 360 degrees mean the whole of the vein is involved with each quarter being 90 degrees assessment is also made for distortion and narrowing or occlusion and whether reconstruction can be undertaken where a section of the vein is removed and then reconstructed directly or with the use of a graft the veins in general lend themselves to removal and reconstruction much more so than the arteries. The arteries are similarly assessed for involvement in length, circumference and whether or not the important branches are involved. When one of the main arteries is involved it is a bigger problem than the vein and frequently these are involved with tumor together. The reason is that the reconstruction option for arteries is more limited and when it's attempted it increases the risk by several fold of mortality and complications. This cartoon represents sites of cancer that are more advanced and involve the import of blood vessels much more closely and hence this would be called a locally advanced pancreatic cancer and surgery initially at least is not possible. Let's look at now let's discuss the decision making for pancreatic cancer. For resectable or removable pancreatic cancer surgery should be performed up front. What if the tumor is borderline resectable? The surgical team ought to make an assessment whether upfront surgery has a reasonable to fair chance of achieving curative resection, that is an R0 resection. In other cases, chemotherapy should be deployed. Let's look into that a little bit more. I this cartoon to understand how chemotherapy is helpful. Over here is a vein and this is the tumor involving the vein. The chemotherapy has the potential, especially the modern agents, that can cause shrinkage of the tumor back towards where, where it started from and thus increasing the likelihood of having, of having the tumor removed with a negative margin as well as reducing the risk of micrometastases of the tumor elsewhere to the body. Once patients complete a course of chemotherapy, typically two to three months, scans are performed to see its effects. It is common on the scans to appear as if nothing has changed, but surgeons are increasingly recognizing that the scans may not present an accurate representation. And when they do operate on these patients, they find that there is the carcass of the tumor still there, which literally has died at the periphery. And hence, there is benefit to the patient regardless. Locally advanced cancers cannot be removed with surgery and chemotherapy is deployed. Scans are routinely performed to see if there has been a significant effect and whether patients would be candidates. Increasingly, expert units are undertaking surgery for locally advanced cancers but choosing them wisely and performing more radical operations with higher risk, that is mortality and complications with reasonable success. What about metastatic pancreatic cancer? That means cancer that has spread outside of the pancreas in this instance say to the liver or to the lymph nodes around the aorta. It can also spread to the lungs, the bones and within the abdomen. Surgery unfortunately is not an option and patients are, treat are treated with a palliative intent with chemotherapy. This is still the case even if the primary cancer and the metastases can be removed with surgery. Unfortunately experience has shown that even aggressive surgery does not change the course of the disease but adds to the morbidity of the patients. Just to mention two small caveats. If the only other site of involvement apart from pancreas is the periodic lymph nodes and the patient's, and the patient's disease remains stable or regresses with aggressive chemotherapy, then there is evidence to suggest that surgery can be undertaken to remove the primary site as well as the periaortic lymph nodes. The outcomes are not as good as patients with pancreatic cancer limited to the pancreas, but there is ground for hope. The active area of research is the role of surgery for low volume metastatic disease specifically in the liver. Further evidence is awaited to see whether or not surgery improves the survival and the quality of life of patients. If after chemotherapy their primary and the secondary respond and the disease remains under control, whether at this juncture surgery may be undertaken, the jury is still out. It is important to remember in trying to achieve cure, patients would obviously 
wish to have the tumor and the secondaries removed. But unless we have conclusive evidence, procedures are not without risk and debility, and they may subtract good quality life from the patient if definitive benefit cannot be achieved. This completes a brief overview of this complex topic. If you have experience or comments to share, please do so.